Putin claims to have received secret proposal from Ukraine. Russian dictator comments for first time on presence of North Korean units in war in Ukraine and how Ukrainian paratroopers reveal death road in Kursk region. The latest news next. Ukrainian paratroopers have posted a video showing destroyed Russian equipment in Kursk region, reported by communications unit of the 82nd Separate Air Assault Bukovina Brigade of the Air Assault Forces of Ukraine. The Air Assault Forces of Ukraine. Quote, death road in Kursk region. This is a path strewn with destroyed enemy equipment, a scorched trail left by the enemy in defeat. Paratroopers from the 82nd Air Assault Brigade and other units of the Armed Forces of Ukraine have systematically erased the military equipment of the adversary from the face of the earth, leaving only a smoldering ruins and debris from the so-called Second Army in the world. About details, reportedly the notorious 155th Brigade of the Russian Naval Infantry has suffered the greatest losses in equipment. The first North Korean military units that have undergone training at training grounds in Eastern Russia have arrived in the war zone. They were spotted in Russia's Kursk region where Ukrainian forces are conducting an operation on the 23rd of October, reported by Defense Intelligence of Ukraine. The first North Korean military units that have been trained at training grounds in Eastern Russia have arrived in the war zone of the Russo-Ukrainian War. In particular, they were seen in Russia's Kursk Oblast on 23rd October 2024. The North Korean troops who arrived in Russia are being trained at five military training grounds located in the east of the aggressor state. Baranovsky Usurysk, Dongus Ulanude, Ekaterinoslavsky, Ekaterinoslavka, 248 Knyazhe Volkonskaya and 249th Sergeyevka. About details, DRU noted that North Korean military personnel whom Russia intends to use in the war against Ukraine have several weeks to train. Ukrainian intelligence added that the number of North Korean troops deployed to Russia is currently around 12,000, including 500 officers, particularly three Pyongyang generals. Moscow has appointed Deputy Defense Minister Yunis Bek Yevkuro as the person responsible for overseeing the training and adaptation of the North Korean troops. The soldiers sent by Pyongyang are being supplied with ammunition, bedding, winter clothing and footwear, and hygiene products. In particular, according to the established norms, Moscow will provide each North Korean with 50 meters of toilet paper and 300 grams of soap every month. The Kremlin has high hopes for the North Korean component in the war against Ukraine and the global confrontation with the West. For the first time, Kremlin leader terrorist Vladimir Putin has commented on reports that North Korean troops are being sent to Russia to take part in the war against Ukraine. Reported by Putin at the final press conference of the BRIC summit in Kazan, Russia, and Russian media report. About details, the question was asked by a journalist from the US television company NBC. He said that satellite images showed the presence of the North Korean military. What are they doing here? The journalist asked. And isn't this a serious escalation of the conflict? Putin once again claimed that it was not Russia's actions that led to the escalation and accused Western countries of helping Ukraine fight. The Russian terrorists recalled that the state Duma had ratified the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Agreement with North Korea signed by Putin in Pyongyang this summer. The document provides for mutual assistance in the event of aggression against one of its participants. The State Duma is the lower chamber of the Russian parliament, Putin added. We will see how this process develops. Russian dictator terrorist Vladimir Putin has claimed at the BRICS summit that a representative from Turkey received a proposal for Russia from Ukraine during the September session of the UN General Assembly in New York and passed this information to the Kremlin. Reported by Kremlin-aligned Russian news agency RIA Novosti with reference to Putin at the press conference following the BRICS summit. About details, Putin did not specify the nature of Ukraine's proposal. Turkey also presented an initiative concerning the Black Sea situation. To ensure safe shipping, establish certain agreements and reach security arrangements regarding nuclear energy facilities. 
Putin claimed he had agreed to the proposal, but afterwards Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky unveiled the victory plan, which Putin said nullified the possibility of talks. When asked to rate the chances of resolving the war with Ukraine on a scale of 1 to 10, Putin said he found it inappropriate to give any numbers or scores. Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko does not believe that Vladimir Putin will engage North Korean troops to bolster the Russian army. In his view, NATO would respond to such a move by deploying its forces in Ukraine, reports the Institute for the Study of War. In response to a question from the BBC, the dictator labeled as nonsense the information regarding the intentions of North Korean troops to participate in the war alongside Russian forces against Ukraine. He believes that Putin will never attempt to persuade another state to involve its army in Russia's war in Ukraine. He stated that the deployment of armed forces from any country, including Belarus, to the front lines in Ukraine would be a step toward escalation of the conflict. Lukashenko emphasized that if Belarusians become embroiled in the war, it would lead to escalation and that NATO would deploy troops in Ukraine in response to the involvement of another country. He again denied Belarus' involvement in the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine, which partially began from Belarusian territory. In an interview with the Russian TV channel Russia One on October 23rd, Lukashenko stated that he does not believe that the Russian leadership or military needs North Korean troops, that there are sufficient Russian forces on the front lines and the Kremlin has substantial mobilization resources. According to the Belarusian leader, Moscow understands that involving North Korean troops in the war would be undesirable for Russia and the West would respond by sending NATO troops to Ukraine. Kremlin newswire TASS notably did not report on Lukashenko's statements about how the use of North Korean forces in Russia's war against Ukraine is not in Russia's interests, and only reported on his claims that NATO would deploy troops to Ukraine in response to the participation of North Korean forces in the war. In Kyiv region, fires broke out in two districts and the power line was damaged during the Russian drone attack. The alert lasted for more than four hours, says Ruslan Kravchenko, head of the Kyiv Regional Military Administration. At night, Russia once again attacked the Kyiv region with drones. The alarm was announced twice and lasted more than four hours. Ukrainian air defense forces were working in the region and destroyed Russian targets. Although there were no Russian strikes on critical or residential infrastructure and no civilian casualties, there were some damages. In one of the districts of the Kyiv region, as a result of fallen debris from downed Russian targets, a grass flooring caught fire. The fire was promptly extinguished notes the head of the Kiev Regional Military Administration. In another area, the wreckage of a Russian drone damaged a power line and caused a fire in the dead wood. The fire has been eliminated. Operational services continue to record the consequences of the Russian attack at Skravchenko. Russian forces attacked Ukraine with 63 strike drones on the night of the 24th to 25th of October. Air defense downed 36 Russian drones, while 16 UAVs had disappeared from radar, reported by Ukrainian Air Force on Facebook. The enemy launched an attack with 63 Shahed-type strike UAVs and unidentified drones from the directions of the Russian cities of Oral, Kursk and Primorsko-Oktarsk on the night of 24 to 25, October 2024, starting from 2300 on 24 October. As of 10 o'clock, the downing of 36 enemy UAVs has been confirmed in Odessa, Kyiv, Mykolaiv, Dnipropetrovsk, Vinnytsia, Kirovorod, Zhitomir, Khmelnytsky, Cherkasy, Lviv, Rivne, and Poltava regions. Most of the enemy drones were shot down over Odessa and Kyiv oblasts, about details, additionally, 16 Russian UAVs had disappeared from radar. The information is being clarified and updated. This night's air attack was countered by anti-aircraft missile forces, aircraft, electronic warfare units and mobile fire groups of the Ukrainian Air Force and Defense Forces. That's all for today. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe.